Wouldn't it be nice if we had one dog to rule them all? Instead of all of these different breeds, all of these different solutions, because if you think about CPE by itself, CPE by itself, think about it. low cost solutions. What happens with low cost products? Do they last a long time? No. Firmware upgrades, are they regular? Probably not. Is support very good on cheap stuff? Probably not. Lots of problems in that space. We address that with something we call VRG, or Virtual Residential Gateway. A very own portal that belongs to the resident where they can make changes to their network. For example, port forwards, right? Kids are coming, bringing their PlayStation, you know they wanna get online, don't care if it's grandma's house, still gotta kill bad guys. Right? So those guys are going to do stuff like that. Or how about things like upgrading or downgrading my service plan? You can do that. How about booking a hair appointment in a residential community or a assisted living community? You can do that as well. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with virtual residential gateway that you could never do with that. Now the best part is you can do it with an inexpensive access point. The least expensive ruckus access point supports that technology. As a matter of fact, they may not have an AP at all. They may just have a switch port. And that switch port does the same thing. And it gives them the experience and the feeling, right? Experience and feelings. We didn't even talk about that yet. That's what we really create. I asked you why you do what you do. It's about passion. You do it because you love it. What if your customer loved the network too? What if your customer loved being on your network? Is that a benefit in an MDU? If people love the amenities that you offer? Do they love your swimming pool? Do they love your gym? Do they love getting on the Wi-Fi? Anybody here walk around in any of these places that you work in, whether it's hospitality, whether it's MDU, what's everybody doing all day? Are they talking to each other? Probably not, they're doing this. How's the experience? Great experiences create loyal customers. Hospitality Gateway, poor user experience is the first problem a lot of these guys have. Creating a great user experience, easy user experiences that traverse the entirety of the network, no matter where they happen to be, point to point, same connectivity. You guys have probably heard a couple of presentations on RWG, and the first thing that people usually say is they talk about micro-segmentation. It's probably our claim to fame, right? It's like if you talk about ruckus and somebody says beam flex, it's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. It's like they got punched in the stomach, <laughs> beam flex, right? It just pops out, they can't help it. Same thing happens with us, and it's micro-segmentation. But there's so much more to what this dog is today than micro-segmentation. It is a big piece of it. It is part of that hospitality gateway experience, but it, it does create problems in other spaces when you're using all these different services to provide gateways or portals or things like that. One to rule them all. And last up, firewall, EDPSK, whether we're talking about radius, AD, DPSK, controlling these users. One of the biggest challenges in this space is when we do it just using the Wi-Fi, it's only for Wi-Fi users. We can apply that to wired and wireless users across the entire network. Some under-realized opportunities, Vincent. You want to talk about this no, a little bit? Yeah, oh, this is all me. Yeah, all right, right. well, I'm going to go fast because I don't want to talk yeah, too much to you guys. So, uh, <laughs> there's something you guys may not heard of, right, at this point, which is something we call private LTE. Anybody heard of private LTE? There's a lot of conversation going on about it. It's mostly a North American thing. I don't want you to worry about it too much right now, but start thinking about it in the back of your mind. Because whether we're talking about hospitality, MDU, manufacturing, warehousing, transportation and logistics, Wi-Fi users all kind of have and create the same problems. Anybody ever notice that your Wi-Fi clients kind of behave like ill-behaved children? They just do what the hell they want. They go here, they go there, they roam, they disconnect, and you don't know why. Well, LTE doesn't have that problem. What's the biggest difference? Well, in LTE, clients do what they're told. They don't do what they want. See, in cellular, clients don't have a roaming aggressiveness threshold like wireless clients do. Wireless clients get to that threshold and they roam, or they don't where they flap back and forth between devices. That's not how LTE works. So in those spaces that I just named, manufacturing, warehousing, right, logistics, reliability is key and mobility is strong. That's where cellular comes in. There are different spectrums across the world today, depending on what geo you're in, that are being considered for private LTE. In the United States, it's 3.5 gigahertz, for example. But almost every major country is considering private LTE as a spectrum for more reliable wireless communication we're building it into the RWG. Your EPC will be built in so you can have two different wireless networks, same network. Unbelievable convergence will be the only ones in the world with it. Guess what? You're selling it already. That's a big thing. 
Now, remember what I said about quality of experience. Resident satisfaction, if they're happy, do you know what residents do when they're happy? They stay. They stay. You don't have to worry about replacing them when they leave, which means your numbers go up, right? You want to stay at max capacity, right? You want all of your residents, all your units to be rented. That's how that happens. Now, do you know what people that aren't happy do? <laughs> They cry and they bitch and they complain and they call and they, they drive you crazy and you have support costs that go up. You have unhappy residents that tell each other they're unhappy and they leave in droves. Happy people stay. Happy people tell their friends. Resident satisfaction goes up when they have ubiquitous coverage that is reliable and provides services they need. And last up, new potential services. This is for everybody in this room that sells technology. Who sells technology? Let me see some hands. Really, I just want to see if you wore deodorant. Come on, hands up. That's right, all of you. I know you do. So, <laughs> what happens here with potential network services? I want to ask you guys a question that my grandmother used to ask me when I was growing up. A lot of questions because I was a bad kid. What would you do if you couldn't possibly fail? What would you try? What if you had a network device that gave you the ability to manage users, traffic shape users, control users, Give users the power in their hands to control their own journey. Integrate Ruckus IoT, integrate Ruckus Location Services and apply those features and functions at the network policy level. That's what we're talking about here today, guys. That's a big deal. In a transient network, it only takes one a-hole to screw everything up in a lot of networks, right? One person doing bad things. And the right edge gateway can control that architecture and control that network, isolate that user, stop what they're doing, right? Warn them even. One of the cool parts of the RWG is you can send a warning and say, you should probably stop. Bad things are about to happen to you and your children. I'm kidding, not their children. Uh, but when we talk about critical infrastructure, you know, when I just talked about private LTE, for example, right? Critical infrastructure, that's where private LTE is strongest when we're talking about stuff that just has to happen. So enterprise owned devices like tablets or carts, where you wanna make sure connectivity to that point is absolutely critical, it's absolutely gonna happen, multiple nines of throughput. But that diversity, if I create that separate Wi-Fi network, which is not Wi-Fi anymore, it's cellular, but it's still wireless, right? If I create that separate network, no, it depends on what spectrum you're in, but if I create it, I better be able to manage it the same way, right? I better be able to apply the same policies, because in the end, What's the key, what's the buzzword about controlling user experiences and not trusting people to do what the hell they want? We call that zero trust network architecture. And that is part of this technology. And of course, operational segregation. Quality of experience is everything. What are we delivering? There are entire polls, right, that they do. Polls, surveys, guest surveys. What is the number one thing people usually complain about in their guest surveys? In hospitality. The internet, right? Because that's where they spend most of their time. So if they're happy, they come back in hospitality. If they're happy in MBU, they stay. PMS integration in hospitality. All of us here work with some sort of an authentication mechanism, a database of users. That could be PSK, that could be PMS, that could be AD, right? Or it could just be a list of, of users that you've created for enterprise-owned devices. That's a big deal, but what if you have multiple networks, multiple types of users, transient users, enterprise-owned devices, partner companies that are coming in, right? All of these people have different management needs, bandwidth needs, security needs, and they have to be controlled from one place, one dog to rule them all. That's what the RWG is for you in this space. Home-like guest experiences in MDU, right? Or in hospitality, actually this is hospitality. So. Home-like experiences. What do we mean by home-like experiences? I just want to connect. I just want to get there and have it just work. You know, Marriott is a great example. If I'm traveling between Marriott hotels anywhere in the world, I want to walk in and just be online. As a person that has spent like three quarters of my life in Marriott, that's an expectation that I have. Did I get that expectation because it? I just wanted it? Nah, it was probably a fantasy that I had at some point that it would, it would be super cool. Today that happens. Right? It happens through certificates and things like that, but it was extremely complicated for them to do and to deploy worldwide. It's not complicated anymore, it's easy. 
If it's easy, people will do it. If it's hard, people won't. It's that simple. Right? That's why we used to make jokes about you know, the network a-holes that <coughs> make it really hard and give you 25 letter passwords that have all these characters in them. What do people do with that when you give that to them? They put it on a post-it note and stick it on their monitor. Thanks, appreciate that. Really good password security. Keep making it harder. Right? What if we can do better? And back to that potential network services. In hospitality, if we couldn't possibly fail, if we could do anything, what would we try? What would we try to do? If you have a world of opportunity in front of you like you do today, you can be creative. And that is what I challenge each of you to do. With the RWG, which by the way, if you didn't know this already, you can demo it in your labs today for zero dollars. You can install it in your own VMs, no problem, it's software, anywhere you like. Play with it, test it. And I can help. And Hugh, we can help you. Yeah, well actually your local SE that looks yeah. after you from yeah. Ruckus, well, we'll any of us can help you. Yeah. Yeah. I um, run RWG in my network, and I have for the better part of 15 years. I wouldn't give it away. I'd probably trade eh, my middle kid for it. We'll keep the ones on the ends. <laughs> but it's an amazing technology that once you use it, once you play with it, once you have it, you're going to love it, and you're not going to want to let it go because you're going to start solving problems with it. You're going to have customers that go, it hurts right here. And before, you'd have to say, well, I heard about this company that does it, or I worked with this customer that had this technology that does it. Now you can say, I can do it. Isn't that different when you say, yes, I can? Think about that for a minute for me. We'll go to the next one. This is the challenge. This, minus all the crazy spaghetti wiring that we have, because it never looks this clean, right? Because I've been in a rack. What's the craziest rack you've ever been in? This looks like complete ass, right? Wires all over the place. Most of them, you don't know where they go. They're all different colors. Some of them have been around since Methuselah roamed the earth, and you're like, whoa, that's corroded. Probably shouldn't be there. But it is anyway. This is what a typical network rack looks like with routing, possibly an SD-WAN appliance or some sort of integration for WAN optimization, content filtering, network access controls, billing integration. This is a hospitality network now, right? NMS, network management, location-based engines, that's spot. What about an IoT engine or wireless and switch management? That's a lot, isn't it? Isn't that why they make racks seven feet tall so we fill them full of stuff? Does it need to be? Thoughts, questions, no? Does it need to be? I don't think it does. Matter of fact, I don't think it's helping anybody that it is. Because that's a lot to keep track of because every one of these has firewall rules and policies. Every one of these requires integration to be able to talk to everything else. That's asinine. All right, somebody, just because I want some participation, what is that? What are we looking at? Give me a name. What's the name for it? Swiss Army Knife. It's a Swiss Army Knife. That's right. We all know what a Swiss Army Knife is. Why did I give you a picture of a Swiss Army Knife? Which, by the way, that was my best Google attempt to go out and find that and stick a logo on it. So. <laughs> It's a Swiss Army knife. It better be a pretty good knife, right? Because all these other things that it does, they're nice. But it better be one hell of a knife. This is the Ruckus WAN gateway. The Ruckus WAN gateway is one hell of a WAN gateway. It's really good at being a WAN gateway. And that better be really good at being a knife. No, it does a lot of other things. So we're going to focus down for a minute for you on some of the core functions and features that it does, so you know when you put it in the core of what it does, because I've talked about a lot of other features. It is the world's greatest network Swiss Army knife, but it's still a knife, all right? There it is. I took that whole complex here, I'll back it up so you can see how crazy it was. There it is, that's nuts, right? That's a lot, that's seven feet of air conditioning, power, management, support contracts, right? How many of you co-term all of your support contracts on every rack you've been so you only have to buy support once a year and all the stuff? Anybody? What a pain in the... <laughs> right? Not awesome. This looks like this. Does that look a lot easier to you? Looks a lot easier to me. One support contract, one place to go to solve your problems, one dog to rule them all. Now, of course, you're still going to have PMS. You're still going to have your high-speed internet access, that's your WAN connectivity, your wireless <coughs> management, your switch management. However, now here's the thing. Ruckus One is gonna be amazing at managing your Ruckus product, and it's great. And by the way, as a longtime Ruckus person, we've always done this. 
We've always had multiple ways to skin a cat because we're a dog company and we don't like cats. So we always have multiple ways to manage your wireless, multiple ways to manage your switching. This is not different. If you are an end-to-end, -end, top-to-bottom ruckus network, ruckus one's the bomb. How many of you manage networks that are end-to-end, -end, ruckus, top-to-bottom, all the way, everything, including your routing and switching? Mm -hmm. Nobody? Didn't think so. That's why. So the ruckus RWG is a multi-vendor Trojan horse solution that you can lead with into your accounts fix their network connectivity problems, fix their management problems, fix their subscription problems, and then things just get better when you sell them better Wi-Fi and better switching. You can start to take these things out one at a time and simplify their <coughs> life and simplify yours with one dog to rule them all. Key networking functions, Vincent, please. Yeah, sure. So what you expect from a router, right? Layer three router, routing, okay? So obviously, Forwarding traffic, routing, transmitting, uh, transmission info, subnet isolations, we can do all of that, okay? DHCP, DNS built into the box, right? There's no need for a separate DHCP or DNS server, okay? When creating any networks. Um, security and firewall, layer seven firewall, application firewall with DPI. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things built in there. There's proxy servers, uh, whatever you need. There's uh, content filtering, it's all in there. Yeah. Yeah. This is the knife. Great router. Yes, sir. Well, I think they're going to be trying to compete with us because there's a lot of things that they can't do that we can. But yes. Well, they're on the market since. Yes, they're marketing. Well, they are specifically a firewall. So, to an extent, yes. To an very much so because you are going to have partners, not partners, customers, because you guys are partners. But you guys are going to have customers they really want to simplify their life. And doing everything in a FortiGate, for, first of all, FortiGates are not simple. <laughs> if you've ever configured one before, they can be a bit of a challenge. And any policy-based firewall can be a challenge. What about UTM? What's that? What about UTM that UTM. exists within? Absolutely, the UTM exists in here. So whether we're talking about content control, streaming antivirus, all there. IPS, IDS. Yes, IPS, IDS as well. Now, is it as evolved as something like a Palo Alto? Absolutely not. Okay, if you're looking for AI based security firewall rules, not there. That's not where we play. And if that's something they're going to go for, let them have it. Right? I'm not, the, I'm not somebody that's going to tell you that we're the best at every absolute thing we do. For example, our content filtering rules are open source. We pull that from the open source database. It's always updated, but it's updated by the community. So there's going to be some challenges there. And that's okay. I don't mind that. We're going to be honest about what it is that we do well. It is one hell of a router. Can we do BGP? Absolutely. Right? No problem. RIP, OSPF, all day long. Great router. Is it absolutely better at firewall and security than everything SonicWall, FortiGate, or Palo Alto does? No. There will always be something they do that is specific to that. But can it do what 99% of your customers need to do on a daily basis and do it very, very well? Yes. It puts you in a very rare error. We talk about DNS and DHCP. Yeah, pretty much everybody can do that. But security firewall? Reducing the need for another appliance, reducing the need for more support costs, reducing the need for more complexity, reducing the need for more policies. Because by the way, when you have a device where everything talks to everything and all of these services are layered in and built together and they're all working together, that means you can create your rules in one place and you can see all of your policies and how they relate to everything in one place. When we do a feature demo for you, which by the way, if you come by the booth, we can show you what this looks like in real life. Just out of a matter of interest, the most common question I've got today so far, or in yesterday while the booth was open, is this, is it scalable? <laughs> yeah. Infinitely so. Yeah. Infinitely so. How scalable? We're running the second largest airport on the planet off of one of these with over 190,000 unique <coughs> connections a day. And it's running on a stack of these. It scales as high as you would like to scale it. Dallas Cowboys Stadium with over 100,000 unique devices connected at a time, runs on this. For right. the record, it's the largest airport, too. Oh, yeah, Hartsfield is the largest now, isn't it? That's yeah. right. It goes back it goes and forth. back and forth between that with and Chicago. Chicago. Oh, it's yeah. huge. I don't like flying through there for that reason. Thanks, Clint. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So some of the other things that we can do with uh, on the SD-WAN side, virtual private networks by, uh, by our IPsec or OpenVPN already on there, ready to go. So customers that have been looking for SD-WAN solutions from Ruckus, everybody's been asking us for the last three, four years, 
we now have it, SD-WAN, okay? Uh, with the SD-WAN, dynamic path selection, so which route is the best way to go? Or I want a certain app to go through one route and not the other route, for example. We can do all of that. Flexible connections, so we can have a primary connection and a backup connection on the WAN side. If one fails, we move over, vice versa with the, the VPNs. One side fails, it routes the other direction. We can do all of that, okay? And then central management. So with central management, there's something called the pack manager, where we can manage as a service provider or an MSP or uh, enterprise customer that wants to manage your customers or your uh, yeah your customers. <coughs> pack manager sits in your location and it will manage all of your RWG devices out there in the wild. You know, most people talk about SD WAN. It's because they're filling out an RFP and it says must do SD WAN, right? It's a checkbox for a lot of people. And it would have been easy for us to just do a couple of these things to call it SD WAN, but we knew we couldn't do that. Dynamic path selection is a great example of an SD WAN feature that people have come to expect today from their SD WAN vendors. I mean, what, what is that? What are we talking about, dynamic path selection? What we're talking about is choosing the best path based on application type, <laughs> traffic type, density, right? how much bandwidth are they using, and giving them the best path moving forward. These are all rules that you can select, choose, and implement on your WAN paths to make sure that your customers are always connected. That could be something as simple as failover. It could be load sharing. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And of course, some of these things we've been talking, we've already been doing for 20 years. We just got a new name for it with SD-WAN, a software-defined wide area network. And of course, that flexible connectivity and that management all under one place. If you haven't seen Pack Manager yet, it is fat like a first grade pencil. It is the coolest thing ever. We call it cube management. You can actually create these Rubik's Cube looking <laughs> networks for each of your RWGs and select them, drag them out, and configure them, drop them back in. Most importantly, like let's say you have a hotel chain or you have 10 or 12 hotels that you work with. What I love is you can actually take that first one that you configured, create a template in Pack Manager, and apply it to the other 11. And you're done, they're configured, you're finished. What are we looking at? Identity. Who and what is connecting to our network? Do we trust them? Don't we, right? Yeah. The instant that we don't trust them. So we've got to work out how do we do that, right? So we look at the data, site-to-site -site VPNs, uh, devices, if it's a device persistent device. Uh, we, do, we can do posture checking as well on the devices where we can actually run an app on the device to do posture check or the background uh, scanning that we've, uh, we've been used to with CloudPath, but we can actually load an app to do it at any given time. Whether the OS is correct, whether they have antivirus installed, things like that, right? We can also look at the workload. Uh, so looking at the, the packets, seeing what's inside the packets, using the deep packet inspector, analyze the traffic, some, uh, understand the patterns that is going through the RWG, and make intelligent decisions on how to deal with that traffic. And then the network. We've talked about micro-segmentation or, uh, what's the other word? Dynamic VLAN. Dynamic, dynamic VLAN, yeah. right? We can do all of that. And as Sean's pointed out, we can manage third-party switches to do this, right? So on the micro-segmentation, you can go set up the DHCP um, scope, you can go set up the network, the VLAN, and you can push it down to third-party switches that the Ruckus access points are connected to. Right, or onto the ruckus switches and that's just once. So Hundreds of VLANs. Third party um, products as well to do this. Yeah. So this is a core function of the RWG. Zero trust. Remember what I said, my, my analogy for the Swiss Army knife, right? Better be a damn good knife. Let me ask you a question. Anybody here ever heard of black hat before? Yeah. Hands up, yeah, black hat, you know what it is? Like the elevators get hacked. It did while we were there. The elevators got hacked. They were not on our network to see them. But the elevators got hacked. This is why we can't have nice things. You can't even ride in an elevator at Black Hat without bad things happening. They tell you, don't bring your cell phone. right? Put on a tinfoil hat when you go to Black Hat because your shit's going to get hacked no matter what it is. Not good. For three years running, we ran Black Hat on this platform. Never got hacked. They couldn't hack it. You asked me if it's a good firewall. If that doesn't answer your question, I just don't know what will. Because those guys, they live to hack stuff. They tried to hack stuff. They, they did everything they could to hack stuff. And they couldn't do it because our zero trust architecture made sure of it. Made sure that these users 
were where they belonged with the things they were supposed to have access to, and when they misbehaved, they got shut down. You want me to take this one? Go ahead. Uh, no, we, we, we only got a couple of minutes yeah, left. We only have two yeah. slides left, so we're pretty yeah. good. Uh, mm. Uh, we do have .1x, yes. So .1x is a primary, it's a MAC address, so it's layer two. We're a layer two through seven application layer gateway. What are you saying, shutting down the user? Shutting down the user would be at the physical level, be at the MAC level. We'd shut them at the port level on the switch because we manage the switches as well. Yeah, yeah, but what protocol would you use? Would it be .1x, MAC authentication, or would it be? Were they .1x at Black Hat? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're 1x. They de-off them in 1x. It just depends on the deployment the other one. Yeah. So we've got a bit into Pack Manager. Sean did describe it. This is the cube layout, right? This is a couple of networks running multiple nodes of RWG. Again, you can pull out these cubes, you can manage them, you can configure them, put them back in, make templates from them, push it out to the rest of the cube or the cubes. Everything out or it simplifies management of Large. Yeah. Once you get you once you get used to looking at it, it's the coolest thing ever. But we do actually give you a full view as well, complete with speedometer views and everything else. If you want to see the old school view, we got that for you too. It's a security management. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a management security feature too, because yeah. you can put it in a data center and you can stop all management of RWGs from anything but Pack Manager. So if you wanted to put ACLs on there, shut down SSH, HTTPS access, you can do it only through Pack Manager. That's right. And because in the interest of time, we're going to just go through this one quickly. What is this right here? This is a slide that indicates to you what this device is because it is a gateway product. It is designed to be in data path. It's an in data path product. In data path products that do routing, traffic with firewall, SD-WAN, we call this BRAS, right? Remote access server, right? That's essentially what these things are, remote access systems. Control plane is out of data plane. So portals, subscribers provisioning, subscriber management, authentication, external authentication servers. There are things you can do with the Ruckus Wayne gateway that are out of data path. But characteristically speaking, where it lives best is in data path, doing all of these things for all people. Like I said in the beginning, one dog to rule them all. So this is really where we bring this thing to a head for you to help you understand in MDU, because I said we're going to talk about MDU, we're going to talk about hospitality, and we might even talk about a little bit large public venue. Tenant satisfaction, quality of experience. Are they happy? Does it work? Does it do what they need to do? Can they live, work, and play and never leave? You know, that never mattered more than it mattered during COVID. Now everyone cares. Ubiquitous coverage, that's a ruckus function. If you've got great Wi-Fi and you've got great wired network infrastructure, ubiquitous coverage isn't that hard, right? But you've got to have the right stuff to do the job. Monetization, that's what this product does at its core, right? There are functions in here that we didn't even talk about today. In conjunction with Spot, walking, the, walking a, a campus, and when I walk by the bar in a hotel, I get a text message with a coupon for $5 off my bill. I stop by the bar in the next 15 minutes. You can do that with this technology right here built in. And by the way, no subscription fees. You just pay your license. No feature-based subscriptions. One price. And operational efficiency. I'm sorry, that is exactly what I was just talking about. One bill. Oh no, sorry, you can't have that. You gotta pay the extra subscription. If you don't like that, talk to Clint. He's the one that came up with it. And of course, hospitality, guest satisfaction again. People who are happy come back. People who are happy don't leave. People who are happy tell a friend. That's what you're looking for. And you're looking for the ability, especially in hospitality, to monetize. You know, we have a hotel, I'm not gonna name who it is, unless you wanna come see me at the table, then I'll tell you, I'll give you the secret. Making over a million dollars a year just off of upselling Wi-Fi bandwidth. Over a million dollars a year extra they're making. Do you think they pay a million dollars a year for their RWG? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, their first year they paid for almost all of their wireless upgrades through Ruckus before they ever got around to offering services. Large public venues, you know, this one's big, by the way, because in large public venues, the service usually sucks. So adding this as a way, right, to secure users, provide them with qualified, uniform experiences, to provide them with their own personal area network. That's a security thing, right? Remember, only one bad apple to ruin an entire bushel. And Dallas Stadium's a really big bushel, <laughs> right? That's 100,000 people at one time. One bad actor can do a lot of bad things. It might not even be their fault. 
Anybody ever a broadcast storm that came from one device that just misbehaved? I know I have. Yeah, quite a few. Billing. How about self-management? Do you know we have a captive port, a portal system built just for trade shows? So if you go and sell to a convention center, a non-technical person can set up a network for everyone that comes in all year long with their own logos, their own pricing, their own everything. It's built into the RWG already. And of course, location-based content. I can deliver experiences to you based on where you are because of the integration with Spot. But one thing I didn't even tell you guys is if you have a hypervisor that you want to load for something else that you need, a VM that you need, you don't even need a separate server. You can load it right in your RWG. We have a hypervisor built into the technology. Guys, this has been about one dog to rule them all. This is the RWG and it's yours right here, right now. We're downstairs showing it off. If you want to stop by and see us in the booth, make me busy, I dare you. Yeah, thank you everyone. I really appreciate it.